talk to me about the different scaling solutions to scale exchanges. So you have layer one scaling solutions, you have layer two scaling solutions. Is there a thing like layer three scaling solutions? Not that I know of. <laughs> okay. So there's layer one scaling solutions, there's layer two scaling solutions. So the layer one scaling solution is actually scaling the base layer. So with ETH 2.0, for example, that would be a layer one scaling solution or one of the other competing layer one chains. Um, in the layer two scaling solutions, what you guys have done is you've taken the exchange functionality off chain. So it's almost like a side chain. Is, are all side chains layer two solutions? We could say that we're layer two. We could also say like we're layer 1.5 because we don't, we don't depend on any more security properties than Ethereum. Uh, so we don't have our own set of validators, uh, which like people expect when you say it's a side chain. Uh, yeah, we, we of course will still have our own chain because we, we create our own blocks, but because it's as secure as Ethereum uh, and all the data is also posted on, it, on Ethereum. So uh, if you want to compare our solution with some, some others, uh, some other uh, like scalability solutions is we don't have any uh, we don't add any security assumptions like like I said before we're completely like Ethereum uh, so other scalability solutions like uh, Plasma for example uh, don't put all the data on chain so uh, that's one of the big things uh, that we do that other people don't do if the operator suddenly stops doing anything then the only thing you have available on chain is like the Merkle root, which is like just some kind of hash. And with just that kind of ha uh, with that hash, you don't know how much money you have. Well, you may know how much money do you have, but you can't prove on chain that you have that amount of funds stored in the exchange. So that's why we put all the data on chain. So people just by looking at the Ethereum chain can build the complete exchange state off chain. And then they can generate their own proofs, their own Merkle proof, uh, submit, that, submit that on chain, and then they can get, still get their money out. Pretty important, that's like the data availability problem. That's, so that's like one of the important things that other solutions are missing because if you can't generate that Merkle proof with all the exchange state, then yeah, basically all those funds are locked in uh, locked and nobody can get anything out. Uh, then there's also like the, when we do Zico rollup, uh, then you also have the optimistic rollup solution uh, where they don't use zero knowledge proofs, but they use fraud proofs. So one of the disadvantages of that is that uh, you still have to have validators looking at the chain to see if all the, all the state transitions you did are actually valid. The other disadvantages of optimistic rollup is that mostly you have to put more data on chain. So like, like with before, like uh, we say that we, you can rebuild the complete exchange state from the data we post on chain. Uh, optimistic rollup also need to do that because everybody needs to be able to verify if the exchange uh, of the, that the state's change uh, was correct. So all the data needs to be available. Uh, and because all the data needs to be available, you also need to put more data on chain than necessary to, to have the complete exchange state. So for example, uh, for simple transactions, uh, you normally have to put like the, the normal data, like uh, from address to address, token, amount. Uh, but for optimistic rollup, you also need to put the signature on chain because, of course, uh, to do the transfer, you also have to have a, a valid signature to transfer those funds out. For Zika and Zika rollup, you don't have to put the signature on chain because the signature is validified in the, in the circuits and is proven to be there by the proof that's submitted. So the, the, the ZK rollup solution has a couple of benefits over uh, optimistic rollup. Uh, the other one, uh, just to make it more complete, is that, that the state is also finalized faster. So on the optimistic rollup, you have to wait a certain amount of time so people have the time to submit fraud proofs. Uh, so th that means that if, if people commit a block, 
it's, it takes a, lot, a long time, like minimum a couple of hours, uh, maybe even days, until you can be sure that the state is actually valid just because you have like this delay that you have to build in just because yeah like ethereum could be congested for like eight hours so you need to make the period long enough so that people can still get their fraud proven so for optimistic rollup that takes a lot a long time but for zk rollup uh, that's basically in the hands of the operator itself to uh, how long that takes so like generate a proof for like uh, Currently, like for uh, a thousand trades in a block, it only takes like less than two minutes. So we can we can do withdrawals requests. Uh, we can handle withdrawal requests uh, very fast. So people can also get their money out uh, very quickly, like in uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, 